Hello and welcome along. My name is Sam and uh, and this is my farm. This is Letton Farm. Uh, today is April the 14th uh, and we're going to be doing some seeding. Uh, we need to seed the... Uh, we need to seed... Ooh, yeah, ooh. Uh, yeah, we need to seed the spring barley today. It's getting uh, a little bit late, so we need to make sure that we get that in. So I'm just getting my seed bag up at the moment, and we will get this done and, uh, and load it into our Amazon uh, 0830 special. So, there we go. All loaded up. Doesn't take a huge amount. We don't. Uh, we don't tend to keep a lot of seed bags and things around here. All right, there we go. So we'll just put that back. There we are. Right, and park this up. And uh, yeah, our uh, our little case is all ready to go. So we'll just jump in. Right. Oh, no, I haven't closed it up. I'm going to close up the uh, back first. There we go. Close that up. Close it up. And away we go. Avoiding the chickens. Come on. Out right, the way. Yeah, don't throw at me, cockle. Right, and uh, we're going to go and plant this field here. So we've been doing a lot of work in this field here uh, <laughs> recently. Uh, we only have two fields to plant, of course, at the moment. The other field, I am still um, still taking suggestions for what we might plant in there. But uh, this field here, uh, we are planting the spring barley. So let's get lined up and uh, and just get it planted. So, okay. Right, turn on our sewing machine. Drop it down. Right, and away we go. All right, so I'm going to put the... Uh, there we go. We'll put that out as well. Make it easy for us to uh, follow the next line. Uh, and there we go. We are seeding our barley quite nicely now. Uh, so, yeah, spring barley in here. Uh, we've got winter wheat in uh, in one of the other fields, and then uh, and then yeah, whatever you guys think we should plant in uh, the final field. Uh, we have uh, leading at the moment, I should say, is uh, soybeans. Uh, people really want to see me plant soybeans at the moment. Uh, if you want to see me plant something else, like maybe sunflowers or um, canola, uh, all seed rate then uh, let me know but yeah certainly at the moment we're going to be doing some uh, some soybeans as it stands there we go and away we go so keep that in the middle of the bonnet so that's the great thing about the guides and using the guides is that uh, they do it just makes it easier to get your line right and it reduces any kind of overlap or anything else you have. And if you use it properly like this, it can just keep you on the straight and narrow. So yeah, the plan today, absolutely, uh, with this nice old cedar. Uh, this cedar's from uh, sort of the mid 90s, uh, is to get it to, uh, uh, is to get this field planted. Uh, with this spring barley. Uh, next time, uh, I think I'll go through some uh, the work with cows with you. Uh, of course, they need feeding and watering every day. And uh, there we go. Uh, so we'll uh, yeah towards the end of this month because we not we won't we won't plant whatever we're planting in the other field. We won't plant until early next month. So it'll be, uh, so I've got one, I'm going to do one more vlog this month for you guys. And, uh, and basically we'll cover the animals with that vlog. And just, uh, uh, just working with the cows and, uh, and doing stuff with them. 
getting them all fed and, and everything. Uh, as I said, it's a daily task, but it's one that uh, that I like to do from time to time in these uh, in these vlogs. Go round, line ourselves back up. As I said, I don't tend to do. I'm a little bit strange on this one. I don't tend to do a lot of headland. Um, we have quite a bit of grass around the fields, so we don't need a lot of headland. Uh, we tend to do maybe a, a width, uh, maybe two sometimes, depending on how I'm feeling. And uh, yeah, so I tend to go right up to the edge when I'm doing this. Uh, of course, we're going to have to get some, uh, well, we spend most of our summer doing um, uh, fertilizing and, and things. Uh, but we do need to. We do need to actually get some fertilizer on the spring. Uh, I'm sorry, on the winter wheat soon. Uh, that needs that needs a bit of springtime fertilization. Yeah. The only thing about only using the grass area to turn around is it's a little bit tight. So you do tend to end up doing a little bit more manoeuvring than if I had like three or four widths of uh, uh, widths of headland. But the trouble I find is that headlands tend to not produce great crops. So uh, yeah, and you tend to get a little bit of headland anyway, simply from doing spraying and things, because you need a wider width to turn around with the sprayer. So while the grain of, uh, of how I planted it. Is, um, is right up to the edge. There's still some headland for, from things like uh, spreading fertilizer and spraying and things like that. Which of course tends to define headland more than anything else. Right. There we go. On it in the middle again. And down. Uh, yeah, this is a this is a really nice little um, uh, cedar. It, it does it's done us really well over the last five years. Again, it was one of those things that we bought when we uh, first bought the farm, and uh, and yeah, it does the job perfectly. We uh, we don't really need anything else. Um, uh, thinking about it, if uh, if anybody was to choose, you know, if some flowers were to, to come up top in the uh, for the other crop, we would have to get a new cedar, we, or we would at least have to hire a new cedar, because it's a crop that currently I don't think we have much on the farm that could uh, that could handle it, that could do it. I don't think we have a cedar, and I don't think we have a header for the combine. Uh, so yeah, that would uh, that would not work out overly well. There we go. So yeah, uh, we don't, you know, we, we just think about it. We don't have anything. We do silage, brown silage bales here, and not not use the silage clamp and things like that. So it's. Um, yeah, we are gonna. If we're gonna expand, we are gonna have to invest in the farm a bit in the next uh, next year or so. So uh, I think it'll depend on how good this year's harvest is. If this year's harvest is a good harvest, we will end up with a uh, being able to expand the farm come the end of the year. Uh, maybe add another arable field. Maybe uh, maybe even turn one of one of the things I do like to do sometimes. Uh, and I think it's useful is to uh, switch around the fields. So there's a couple of uh, of our grass fields that would make possibly uh, a good arable field. So um, yeah, there's always that possibility as well. So yeah, there's there's lots there's lots to do on the farm. Lots of lots of interesting stuff going on. It is uh, I, I've started these vlogs basically at the point where. We've had five years to bed in. We've, uh, we've we've just been sort of trundling along for these five years, and we're now on the cusp of uh, of expanding. Uh, I think one of the things that we're going to expand on almost immediately come the summer 
and I've, uh, I've touched on this in a for, uh, previous vlog, I think, uh, is, uh, is another tractor. We've got a lot of hours on this tractor, and it had quite a few hours when we started. Uh, and, uh, and it might be quite useful, not, not to replace this, but to have a second tractor on the farm. Uh, and I'm thinking, I'm just thinking of maybe something that, that we can do some carting with or something like that. So maybe a, a JCB or something like that, or... Oh, I've not got my... There we go. Uh, a JCB or something like that, or uh, or maybe a, 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 a slightly... Um, a, a Ford or a New Holland, maybe a TM115 or something like that. Just something to, uh, to sort of spread the load a bit. Uh, the New Holland actually would probably be a good choice simply because uh, it, we could get it to work on stuff like this. A similar sort of, looking at something a similar sort of horsepower to this, we don't need, we're not a big enough farm to ever need anything uh, much larger to be honest. This is definitely a small equipment farm. We're, we're not, we're never going to need, you know, a six meter cedar or, or anything like that or... or 300 horsepower or you know it's it's not that kind of farm we uh, we very very much can uh, can basically get along with this kind of stuff I mean you can see by a, how long it takes me to to get through these fields is that in that we you know we're, we're, we're pretty good as I said, I would like to expand the farm. I would like to get some more fields. I do know several of the local farmers have fields up for sale. So, uh, we are in that position where we can expand the farm if we want to. It's just negotiating for the right one. And we may end up doing, uh, we may go and do a little bit of work for the local farmers, uh, the other local farmers, and see if we can, uh, see if A, we can earn a little bit of money, and B, we can maybe bump their prices down a little bit. Uh, you know, in the in the, the summertime, we end up having uh, not. Sometimes the summer can just be a case of sitting back and uh, and once we've done our own fertilisation and stuff, just letting, uh, just seeing if we can help out anywhere else. So uh, yeah, we might have a look at that. But uh, at the moment, we're uh, we're just trundling along quite nicely. Uh, we should get all of our crops in, in time this year, which will be fantastic. There we go. Right now, get, uh, get the marker down. And ourselves positioned. Yeah, we are going to have to just go around the headland a little bit. Because of the shape of it, there's always some we miss. So uh, I just like to go down the headlands and uh, clean them up a little bit at the end. But it's not a huge headland, and uh, and what what that does tend to actually result in is you, you end up with a a massive extra seeding because we're basically seeding twice on the headlands quite often. Uh, you you end up with a massive extra stuff on your headless so we had to close the gate on our way back in a moment yeah coming along very nicely. So I'm, uh, yeah, a good bit of spring barley in here. We will uh, we'll create, a, a, a part of the reason why, of course, we do both winter wheat and spring barley, uh, as well as then looking for a non-straw crop, uh, is, of course, because we are after straw for cows. The more that we can get off our own farm, the less we have to buy in. 
uh, and that means that we, uh, you know, the cows just become that much more profitable because it's stuff that uh, that's making us money that's producing the straw, and not uh, and not having to to spend a spend a whole load of cash ourselves to uh, to buy in the straw, which is just you know that's that just makes financial sense to to do our own straw. Uh, it should mean in the future that we, uh, when we expand to sheep, will be good as well. Uh, no, no space for uh, pigs around here. Um, it's uh, you know, is is the other big uh, uh, is the other uh, type of animal that you quite see on farms in this area. But uh, yeah, there's there's not really any facilities for pigs around here, so we're not able to. Um, not able to farm them but uh, yeah cows and sheep sheep farm I have got my eye on uh, we do need to uh, negotiate with the farmer for that and probably buy up uh, I think he's trying to sell it with all the fields around it so we have to um, if we want it we've got to uh, we need to buy a load of fields off them as well so it's quite it's quite a big expansion moving into sheep and, uh, and something that I've, uh, something that historically I've never done. Um, uh, and it comes, I think it comes with a flock. I think he's got a flock of about 20, 30 sheep. So, uh, yeah, it would come with that. So it's a big, you'd have to, we'd have to buy the flock as well. And even if we weren't buying the flock from him, we'd have to buy the flock from somewhere. So, uh, yeah, it's quite a big undertaking moving into sheep. I'm hoping that uh, next year, end of next year, we may be able to do that. But we'll see how we go. We'll see if you guys, uh, see if you guys are liking my vlogs at that point enough to uh, for me to still be doing them for VF. Uh, he does, he does let me know how they're doing, and they seem to be going down fairly well at the moment. So thank you everybody who's been watching these. Uh, I'm trying to be, um, I'm trying to be informative. Uh, with these vlogs. Try and give you guys a, a step of every way of what happens on my farm uh, as we uh, as we're going at the moment and it is uh, I'm, I'm hoping it's interesting to you guys I'm hoping you guys are, are learning something about how I do things around here as I said we can be a little bit unorthodox around here so different right so, again, and, uh, and away we go. Whoop, we have not lowered our implement. There we are. Right, so, uh, yeah, not many more uh, rows to go. Uh, making good progress on this. We should have this done and dusted today. As I said, next time uh, I will take you around with cows again. Uh, we need to, we need to, we'll need to make sure they've, they've got enough food, enough water, give them a muck out. Uh, the works, and uh, hopefully it'll go a little bit better than uh, last time we did it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, the cows are doing well at the moment. Uh, we are, we are, over the summer will be calfing season. So we're gonna, we hopefully we're gonna have a few, uh, few new additions to the herd. Of course, if we have any, uh, we, we will need to sell off any bulls uh, eventually. Uh, not initially, not not straight away, of course. But uh, yeah. Uh, but we don't. We historically we don't have a huge, uh, a huge dairy herd, so. You know, historically we don't get a lot of calves. Um, because we, yeah, as I said, we don't we don't have a lot of cows. So uh, yeah, it'll um, it'll be interesting to see what happens this year. Of course, the way dairy farming works is by uh, is by making sure that the cows get pregnant on a regular basis. Uh, 
you. Right, not much more to go. But yeah, this I would I would call us a dairy farm really. This is this very much is a uh, is a mixed farm. There we are. It's uh, it's working very well. As that it is uh, it is as I said we are on the verge of expanding again and it's well expanding for the first time really since uh, since we started right we don't need the marker out this time there's the other one yeah the other one's up good and we'll go around and we will uh, and we'll get this side done and uh, along the way back we'll get the headland done so yeah, it'll be a case of, uh, at the end of this road, we will curb round, sort the headland out, and then uh, we've got enough left over at the edge here, you can see, to, to sort of sort that headland out. And there's just a little bit along here, so very gentle curve. In it. But yeah, we just sort of clear these patches up. Cross a bit, there we go. You yeah, want to try and keep the turn strength because otherwise it just causes all sorts of issues. Right, there we go. So lift that. Try not to drive over what we planted too much. And this is the beauty of the grass is the fact that wherever we end up in the field, we're able to, to get back round. Right, and then we'll just get this headland done here. And then down the side of the field, basically end up where we started. Right. And then, uh, yeah, I think that's it. So, uh, yeah, that is it for today. I am going to get this gate open and head back to the yard. Uh, but for now, all that remains is for me to say thank you for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Please give it a like, drop us a comment, and give it a share. And for all the latest videos from the farm, please subscribe to the channel. And I will see you next time. Goodbye.